President Mr. Ashok Monani, Mr. Prem Asrani, my very, very dear old friend Anshi, Devnani's, Manu Dadlani, and so many friends in the audience. It's our Jim Khana. I used to play here for 10 continuous years table tennis. But when I left Khar, went to Bandra, game stopped and cholesterol took place. But this really Jim Khana is a wonderful place where there are so many games. There are other clubs, but nothing like this Jim Khana where we have got so many friends like Manu, Anshi and others. But friends, coming to the subject, before coming to the subject, there are so many uh, the old songs and couplets people have been saying kya leke tum aaye the aur kya leke tum jaoge mutthi band ke aaye the aur haath pasare jaoge there another film song ra jayega jab yahan se koi na saath hoga do gaz kafan ka tukda tera libas hoga everybody knows who doesn't know that but still when we are alive till the last day of our life we like to accumulate some more wealth whether your children or grandchildren will appreciate or not but this desire to earn more this doesn't pass, actually comes to an end when a person dies all his properties collected by right or wrong means remain in this world nothing goes with us and all the assets and liabilities a dead person cannot take to heaven or hell wherever he goes but he has to live in this world in the hands of some living person a dead person cannot own so this process of transfer of assets and liabilities from li living person from dead person to living is called succession this we in technical term because it's necessary to know this is called succession I'll tell you supposing uh, somebody had booked a flat in Ekta world 2 crore flat 1 crore paid 1 crore yet to be paid and he dies what will happen his legal heir will have to pay 1 crore and take possession of the property so all this right and liabilities are transferred to the living person, not to the dead person, he cannot take. So the property passed now, this succession takes place in two ways. Either it is property passed to those persons who are his legal heirs as per the law of succession, Hindu law of succession, Christian etc, all those Muslim law of succession or as per the will made by the test, that person that is test state section and interstate succession. In India there is no uniform law of succession. Hindus, Sikh, Jain and Buddhists they are all treated in the eyes of law that are considered as Hindus and Hindu Succession Act 1956 is applicable to their succession. Muslims are governed by Shariat Act. There are in Quran, in Holy Quran, there are around 600, I think 6000 verses. Out of that last 800 verses deal with administration of law which contain the law of succession. A Muslim is governed by this holy Quran, those, those 800 verses. And in India, throughout the world, as far as Muslim population is concerned, this Muslim population is divided into two sects, Shias and Sunnis. Majority in the world is Sunnis. And the law applicable to Shias and Sunnis again different. A Khoja in India, Khoja Muslim in India can make a will like a Hindu but others cannot. So we must know if supposing you are making a will. If you are not making a will, the succession as per the law of succession will prevail. If you are making a will, it is challenged, it is declared to be void, invalid, then again you must know the law of succession. So as I said, every Muslim cannot make similar will, 
there are sunnis are different shias are different then you will be surprised to know till 1937 in india most of the muslims used to follow indian culture indian method in succession but then muslim league created demands in those days so britishers also wanted to divide us they passed muslim sharia act 1937 so after that it became compulsory for muslims to follow muslim law sharia act this uh, kachi memans and khojas were observing hindu rights hindu so they were then there was a act kachi memans act 1938 after that even kachi memans stopped following succession of hindu succession even today as i said only khoja muslims are entitled to of make a will and more or less follow hindu laws then comes christians jews and foreigners they are governed by section 31 to 49 of indian succession act they are because britishers were mostly christians they said they treated christians at par jews at par so they made separate sections in indian succession act for jews christians and foreigners there are separate section from 52 to 56 as far as parsis are concerned but in city like bombay we see saif ali khan marrying karina Shahrukh Khan marrying Gauri, and that if Ir Irfan is marrying Kiran, I don't know. There are inter-caste, inter-marriages, inter-caste and inter-religion marriages, and such marriages are generally performed under special marriage act. Now the girl says, "You let's follow Havan." The boy says, "No, let's do this." So this is better to register the marriage under the special marriage act. What happens to that special marriage act? if two persons are marrying under the special marriage act then they are governed by indian succession act as applicable to christians and jews they are not two parsis marrying under special marriage act they will not be governed by parsi law then they will be governed by the laws applicable to christians but there is again one exception two hindus hindu and sikh hindu and jain hindu and buddhist if they marry they continue to be governed by hindu succession act now on this point there was a very interesting case you must know that indira gandhi i think everybody knows who was she she sanjay gandhi died early before her before his mother so there was a dispute between indira gandhi and menka gandhi Indira Gandhi said I am entitled to one third share because you are married as per Hindu law mother is also entitled to one third but as per the Christian law she as per special marriage act she is not so there was a dispute and then the matter went right up to the high court high court said no as per the amendment in Hindu uh, Indian succession act if both spouses are Hindus then they will be governed by hindu succession act so indira gandhi will be entitled to one third share it's a very different story after fighting for so many years indira gandhi after succeeding she said take this one third share for varun i don't want the share i want to give it to varun but i want to teach you lesson you have to fight with the mother in law you can't fight with mother in law so this is the story not story but actual fact which has happened with a person like at the caliber of prime minister so anyway the idea was that how the hindu uh, special marriage act operates now before we proceed i think let's it will be necessary when we are making a will to understand some of the terms which we use in making will <coughs> what is will first of all i think everybody understands but the, what is will will means legal declaration of the intention legal declaration it is not the intention of unsound mind it is not the intention of a minor it is the intention of 
a major person having sound mind so it is called it is the legal declaration of the intention of the person who is making a will about what about distribution of his property and that distribution if i want to make a will i don't want to distribute the property amongst my children right now i want to take that distribution after my death the distribution to take place only after the death of the person making a will now supposing <coughs> i am we are moving every, we, we go to joggers park every day i our friends are mostly my friends are many friends above 70 i make somebody as a executor in the will god forbid he dies after during my lifetime my will i don't want to change my will but the person who was given responsibility he dies what should i do either i make a new will or i can make a codicil that instead of since my friend so and so has expired mr prem man sukhani has expired now i make so and so as the executor of this will and that can be achieved by having a codicil i have supposing four children i have purchased four different flats or properties for them i want to bequeath four different properties my four children i have said lonawala bungalow to so and so kaf parade flat to so and so delhi flat to so and so and one flat i am selling in pune and buying in bandra my will remains intact my i have only changed one flat so i can make a codicil then instead of my pune flat now bandra flat will go to so and so there is no need of revising the will supposing after making a will you have been going to some temple sadhu vaswani mission ramkrish mission or wherever you are your faith leads you some gurudwara wherever you ultimately you feel no i must have given to dhanpothar or ramkrish mission some charity so you want to make small amendment i said my will will remain intact but i want to give 25 lakhs to such and such temple or gurudwara or mosque whatever it is so you can make this by having a codicil there is no need of writing will again now you have made a will you have said so many properties how to be distributed but there must be somebody will is made now you must have somebody to carry out the responsibility ultimately after your death somebody has to take the responsibility of distribution so that person is called executor executor means a person to whom the execution of the last will of deceased is confided by the testator in case of any doubt about the provisions implementation administration executor can approach high court and seek the guidance generally very close relatives are made executors by the testator even nri can become executor of the will it is not necessary that you must have indian if you supposing you feel your son your grandson is in abroad america whom you want to make executor you can make the law doesn't stop if a person has been appointed as executor he has been given some bequest also now i in 1981 there is one queen's villa in uh, pali hill it was owned by one setna family he died the one setna died making me sole executor of the will he was unmarried so he had given me 1 lakh rupees also under the will i thought over the matter i thought it's not wise to become executor of the will ultimately the friend who was my friend he died the property would go to his brother and sister with whom he had litigation in the high court i renounce the executorship but if i renounce the executorship the bequest of 1 lakh rupees in those days which he gave me i had to return so executor if he is renouncing he is giving up the responsibility then he cannot take the bequest also 
that is the law A executor can also be witness there is no law doesn't stop <coughs> now you made a will after the you die and immediately after that executor also dies what will happen the will is intact somebody has to appoint so the court appoints somebody as a administrator his role is just like an executor but since executor has died then the court will appoint somebody as a administrator function will be the same in supposing as in as i told in my case in setna's will i was the sole executor i declined so in this case also the court will appoint administrator somebody he wants to act he has been paralyzed he cannot go to the high court the court can appoint administrator so in certain circumstances administrator can be appointed but if somebody has not made any will there are many in india more than i think here fortunately many people are aware but i am i, I know that many people have not made many people don't make will if they don't make will then how to distribute the assets so in that case one has to obtain letters of administration from the court and the person who is in charge of letter administration is made he is also called administrator now supposing somebody dies leaving he is ordinary man leaving behind huge he was the director of the company he had huge provident fund some shares and some loans there is no need to litigate even go to some advocate for probate etc today the cost is around 2 lakhs rupees <coughs> so later he has got only provident fund some equities so he can obtain succession certificate so succession certificate can also be obtained if there are debts and securities succession certificate enables the person to realize the debts and if he after succession certificate he can give the signature valid discharge so that can be succession certificate somebody dies two sons both are claiming that they have got valid will younger son says my will is valid elder son says my my will is valid what is to be done how to whom to rely so how to prove the will is genuine which is the final will how to recover the debts how to change the property card if there are properties in india dubai in new york how to get all those properties changed in your name unless your will is probated nobody is going, going to accept it although executor gets and he becomes entitled to act on the will right from the death but a will unless there is a probate by the high court this cannot be treated as final so probate means a copy of a will certified under the seal of a court of competent jurisdiction with a grant of administration of estate now if you have property supposing in bombay london and new york you will get will was ex executed in bombay so first you will have to take probate from bombay high court then go to london obtain ancillary or sealing that's called sealing of probate or ancillary probate so you have to obtain ancillary probate from london and new york on the basis of probate issued by the bombay high court london you will get court will issue a ancillary probate which will be easy to do and you may have to pay certain fees in london certain fees in new york but after obtaining probate of a principal will one can go and obtain ancillary probate or it may cause sometime they call a resealing of probate then once the probate is obtained the dispute between two brothers has to come to an end the one whose will has been certified 
that will be treated as final. It also proves that the sometimes you know that what people say, oh my mother was 89, she was not in senses, my brother has taken signature, she was not, she did not understand what she did. So if once the probate is granted, the court certifies testamentary capacity of the testator, then he can't challenge. The will has become valid, it covers all the properties mentioned in the will. When we are filing application for probate, we have to enumerate these are the properties left by the disease and all the properties left by the disease are mentioned. And it also, most important, it proves the title of executor, that he has the right. Now nobody can say no to the executor, your will is doubtful, this and that. Once the probate is obtained, pro executor becomes as good as owner. Probate now, whether probate is necessary. If somebody is in Pune, has properties in Pune, there is no need. If, but if somebody has, is, has executed a will in Bombay, Calcutta and Madras High Court jurisdiction, then the probate becomes necessary. Or either the will are executed in Bombay, Calcutta, Madras High Court jurisdiction, or you have got properties in these three metropolitan cities. You are, ex you are a resident of Delhi but you have a property in Bombay or Madras or Calcutta, still the probate is necessary. As I said, if Muslims normally, for Muslim probate is not necessary, if Muslim has married under the Special Marriage Act, for him the probate under these circumstances will be necessary. As far as Christians are concerned, till 26th May 2002, wherever a Christian dies in the country, it was necessary, it was obligatory to obtain probate. But from 27th May 2002, now it is not necessary for any Christian to obtain the probate. It's not obligatory. Now, what are the essential characteristics of a will? Document called will must be executed by a person who is competent to make a will. As I said earlier, he must be more than 18 years, he must be of sound mind, and it must be attested by at least two persons. Declaration should relate to the properties of the deceased. He cannot bequeath the properties of another. And a power of attorney, you cannot sometimes, you know, we give power of attorney to others, you do this work. No solicitor can be given, no advocate can be given power of attorney to make a will of anybody. He has to do his own. The declaration, this document, must operate only after the death of the person. If document operates during the lifetime, that means it is a deed, it is a transfer deed or gift deed, it is not a will. This is Saman Sa Baraska Palki Khabarni. I know a case where a young boy of 34, his surname was Ramnani Agarbati works. They, he came here in Kharjim Khana at the age of 34, he was 34, went home, died of heart attack. I know another case, he had invited me, a client of ours many years ago, in Masjid Bandar, he started transport company, he was working with somebody, he started his own transport company, Ganatra Transport. We, I went to his had some snacks there, came back home, next I came to know on the same night while he was going, reaching home, he had a heart attack. Death, uh, that this case I told you, Ramnani's case, Agarbati Fala, he died at the age of 34 and he had done gym, lot of exercise in this car gym khana. So, 
nobody knows when that young man can die tomorrow you you can't be sure that i my father died at the age of 90 so i'll also live 90 nobody knows when the death will take him death is inevitable reduce the impact by making a will although it is important to make will yet many people don't make will do you know that osho acharya rajneesh did not make will leave dhirubhai ambani the great man did not make a will there were dispute after the death of dhirubhai praveen babi suraya those two heroines suraya i don't know whether you remember she was about to marry devanand so very popular good actress good singer but she also did not make a will why sanjay gandhi did not make a will now as against that lady diana who met in car accident young beautiful girl she had made a will chetan anand had made a will so it's necessary to make will but many people say still i am young that will make after some time let my son get marry will do it afterwards <coughs> yesterday have you i think you must have read economic times india's almost top most solicitor firm amarchand mangaldas and suresh raf in that firm suresh raf their children shardul and siril they own and their mother they own 60% equity they are handling their disputes worldwide the firm is internationally well known now there is a dispute between two brothers there is a family settlement in 94 that in this manner the mother has given to one share and with the result younger one what to do they are advising international companies and they are in the own so this can happen dispute can happen so better to make dispute uh, disputes are very costly these days do you know harish salve and ram jeth minani how much they charge 15 lakhs 20 lakhs per appearance 25 lakhs i remember confucius chinese sage and philosopher i think more than 3000 years ago he said get merry and lose 50% of your property there are many countries on marriage half the property is goes to the spouse why in pand our uh, goa portuguese law even today if you are goan get merry i think so even today the law is not changed the hus- half the property the husband goes to wife so confucius said get merry and lose 50% of property go to the police station and lose 75% of property and go to big lawyers lose 100% of your property <laughs> <laughs> now you get disposition as per choice not as per the law you have got one son and one daughter your daughter has always taken care of you you would not like to see that she should be benefited more after your death you have got a daughter who is widow you have got a child who is handicapped who is special it's your duty to take special care of in these situations and that you can achieve only by making will otherwise the law will make them equal you have got a, you have got so many relatives but nobody has taken care in your old age your servants have taken lot of care through all throughout your life then is it not your duty to take care of that servant rather than their nephews and nieces there was a case some i think 2010 a maid servant filipino took care of lot of lot of took care and in singapore and when he died he bequeathed all his properties i think were more than 20 crores worth plus palaces house to that maid servant he wrote in the will none of my relatives have taken care of me so i am giving to this lady nurse who has taken my care of me and then sometime why i think that another case Uh, MP Birla and Priyambada Birla. Birla family. He, the both of them made a will, mutual wills, and after the death of Priyambada Birla, she gave it to Mr. Loda, their chartered accountant. He said, 
I bequeath all properties to you, all the companies to Mr. Lodha. And in case Mr. Lodha dies, he is no more, after his death, his son will inherit the properties. Entire Birla family, they were fighting among themselves, but in this case, they all united. They contested the will, but still they lost. So Lodha has succeeded. Now, sometime you feel your son is 8, 20 years old and you have become ill, you may not live. So you can make a provision for your future daughter-in-law. You can make provision for future daughter-in-law. That's of course tax planning coupled with making a will one can take. When Britishers were there, the British soldiers used to go for the war. So they made a special rules for them. The privileged mills, soldiers, army, those army men, mariners, they can make oral wills when they are in the battlefield. Normally we are concerned with unprivileged will or written will. A will which is written in the handwriting of the testator is called holograph will. Then there are oral wills, Muslims can make oral wills or that's called non cupative wills. Now then there are mutual or reciprocal wills. Now two persons execute the will simultaneously. <coughs> they are in double role. Both of them are in double role and generally it is between husband and wife. I give all my properties to you and you give all properties to me. So this is called mutual or reciprocal will. Such a will remains revocable. The very concept of will is you can make a new will every day you want. Your last will prevails. But in case of mutual wills, when one of them dies, the other becomes the owner. And once other becomes the owner, he cannot change the will. One person dies, husband dies, wife becomes the owner, inherits all the properties, and then she remarries and does not give as per the original will, changes the will, that will not be allowed. I will give you another example. Saif Ali Khan and Karina Kapoor both get married. Saif Ali Khan has already two children. Supposing they have two more and they make a will that after my death, everything will go to, my property will go to four children. And she says, after my death, all the property goes to four children. Saif had some heart problems some years back, because still married. He is supposing, God forbid, he dies. What will happen? She will get his, all the four children will become equally entitled. After that, if she wants to change the will, she will not be entitled to change the will. If you have taken advantage under reciprocal or mutual will, then you cannot change the law that will be against the equity. So normally the wills are revocable, but reciprocal mutual wills, if you have taken advantage, are cannot be altered. These are not revocable. Then there can be joint wills, two persons making one will, but actually those are two separate wills. Now, <coughs> as I said, who can make a will? Person of sound mind, who is not a minor, can make a will. A person who is ordinarily insane, but in between he is sane in that interval. In during that interval, he can make a will. Supposing Today, after hearing, somebody is thinking, oh, I have not made a will. I must make a will. He calls his friend, lawyer friend at night and he, they have a drink, then you must make will right now. He is in an intoxicated state. Today, after hearing this lecture, he is a bit intoxicated, drinks two, three, four pegs, I do not know when he became intoxicated and makes a will. That will will not be valid because he must be sane at that time. During intoxication, you can't make a will. A Sunni Muslim cannot bequeath one third of his state unless other here agree to that bequest after his death. 
not during his death. A deaf, dumb and blind, deaf, dumb and blind, who knows what is happening, he can make a will, he is not prevented. A blind person cannot attest the will of others, please note that. A blind person cannot will attest the will of others, but he can make his own will, nobody stops him. Law. Now I will come to, after I think this background, I will come to precautions in making will. Many mistakes are actually taking, taking so we will make, make a precaution in making will. Now knowledge of law of succession, because as I said in the beginning, if tomorrow will is declared to be invalid, then the law of succession of the person will be applicable. When somebody comes to us for drafting the will, we try to understand the law of succession by which the person is governed. As I said, a Khoja Muslim cannot, he can make a will of his property. So somebody, I have made a will for one Khoja, he brought his friend. I said, no, if you are Khoja or Sunni, he said, why do you want to know? You have made a will for him. I said, no, there is a difference. If you are a Sunni, I can't make your will. Or if at the most it will be one third, that also will go. So we must know the law of succession of the testator. Then you must ascertain the domicile. There are persons now, supposing your brother, Kamal's brother is domiciled in UAE, Dubai. He is not actually domiciled. Domicile means residence with the intention to stay there permanently. The UAE law does not recognize. They said you can't become permanent resident of that place. If that is so, then the person cannot be, cannot have domicile of UAE. But whereas US laws, they do recognize, they give domicile, they give other rights to Indians. So one can have the domicile. The mobile properties are governed by the law of country of domicile. And uh, immoral properties are governed, succession to immoral properties is concerned by lex situs, where the property is situated. In India, in Bombay, if your property is situated, you may have to pay 75,000. The person major can be 18 years. In some country, if you are making a will, there the law majority is brand, uh, presumed to be at the age of 21, 25. So, law of that place will be governed regarding immobile property. Domicile governs mobile property and law of the place, lex situs, we call it lex situs in language, so that governs the properties, immobile properties situated in the different countries. If you are having properties in India and abroad, it's advisable to make separate wills. Because as it is, you have to obtain ancillary probate from those that other country. Better to make one will for India, one will for UAE, one will for America. Some years ago, I was reading, UAE had given a judgment in case of German uh, national that Sharia law will be applicable, High Court. He was a Christian, German, his, his death took place, he was in Dubai. But then ultimately High Co Supreme Court of uh, the UAE said no, if he is a Christian, German Christian, he will be governed by his own law, Ger Christian law and not by Sharia Act. <coughs> so it's better to have separate wills and why do you, sometimes you don't want to disclose, so you do not know in London the estate duty is very heavy. If somebody dies leaving a big wealth in domicile in US, UK, London, he will have to pay very heavy estate duty even on the properties in India. So many people are nowadays planning, I don't know Mr. Hitesh Gajariya is very intelligent knowing these affairs. People plan in such a way that they are 40 days, uh, say, 4 months in India, 4 months in UAE, 4 months in other countries. These are the way the people do this. Make the will in the language known to the testator. Somebody comes to me for making a will. My computer drafts are there. I generally try to make a will in English. Whether 
he is a tamil telugu maharashtrian whatever it is if you make a will in the language not known to the person it becomes easy to challenge if you are try to make i have made a will in gujarati i have made a will in marathi sindhi but then after consultation because we are also really not good ma'am sindhi is my mother tongue but i find this english is very easy to make will but if you are making a will in the language which is not known to the testator make a, attach a certificate there this will has been interpreted by me in sindhi language gujarati language marathi whatever it is mother tongue and he has perfectly understood the same apart from two witnesses make have one certificate by the person otherwise the chances are if somebody challenges such will it will be difficult it might not stand because the person was did not know this then there are big properties the chances are somebody is going to challenge then have a testator may, may read his will sign it in the presence of witnesses and have it video recorded this will become a good evidence see things are changing video recording of the will was not known in the past but we are changing technology is changing very fast i am not using powerpoint where most of the younger generation they are using powerpoints things are changing so this video recording may be relied upon if whole will is read by the person i make this my will i read it sign it at attested by two persons that video recording can also sometime become useful then the tendency is when we make executor we make executor one who is a close to me of my age please be careful executor must be young and trustworthy always make executor that person who is at least 15 20 years younger than you who is expected to live longer than you don't make your friend because he is of my age we are very close no no is better to make ashi son rather than <laughs> executor this one has to be very careful in these things then sometimes what happens you after i have got four big properties i give to my four sons two sons to daughter who so then i feel that after giving these four properties i will be left with some bank balance give it to my servant and that that is called residuary legatee the person who gets residue balance is residuary legatee one has to be very careful in giving bequest giving gift benefit to residuary legatee because sometimes it can play havoc with the whole affairs residuary legatee is entitled to legacy which lapses you are given gift to your friend who dies before you that bequest that gift lapses it becomes comes back to the testator invalid bequest then acquired something which is acquired by the, i thought i am 73 today i may not acquire some big property during my lifetime i may live 90 95 in between i require acquire some more properties and don't change the will the properties which are acquired after the making of the will and before the death will also go to residuary legacy so be careful i have seen many wills they at that time today i am having 5 lakhs bank balance i give today but who knows in 10 more years i may acquire much more wealth and i give residue to so and so he will become richer than this i'll give one example <coughs> somebody who is unmarried try to understand this example and you will understand the implication of residue legacy he is unmarried he owns a huge bungalow there are many parsis who still own huge properties owns a big bungalow he is giving bequest to his nephew and residue bank account to his servant 
both testator and nephew die in car accident and we do not know who died first whether the testator died first or the nephew died first so no evidence who died first now who will become the owner of the bungalow <coughs> think over it <laughs> the servant will become the owner because the nephew died the legacy will left it will form the it come to the back to the testator and he has a residue to my servant so he'll become the owner of that so instead of giving few lakhs he'll get few crores from 30 40 50 crores i don't know so one has to be very careful using these words but if the legacy is given to the child or lineal descendant that legacy doesn't come to an end this is remember this is a law has thought you may give to others but your own child and your own lineal descendant a legacy will go it will be presumed that that your son or grandson lived more than you he died one day after you so this is safeguard I'll, I'll, another example i think going to a 60 years unmarried testator had bequeathed a flat to his friend's son a, a 60 years old unmarried person had bequeathed a flat to his friend's son and he wrote he, he thought i am 60 let him become 18 on completing 18 years of his age now another it was said in case because he was 60 he thought he on the child is only two years i may not be able to see that when he becomes 18. he said in case the child dies before completing 18 years then the said flat will go to the father of the child i am giving please understand the example that's why that sometimes people make a mistake why 60 year old testator bequeaths a flat to his son of his friend and he makes a condition that the flat will go to him only after he completes 18. In case the child dies before completing 18, it will go to his father. <coughs> Is it not normal will? Now presume the child completes 18. And but he dies at the age of 20 and testator is still living the person who was 60 is 80 the child dies who will get the flat after the death uh, think over it <laughs> see legacy the child because you know legacy would a child legacy the child lapses as he died during the lifetime of the testator although he completed 18 years he, but he died at the age of 20 but testator was alive so the legacy fails legacy to the father also does not take place because the child had completed 18 years if child had died before 18 the father would have become the owner now neither the son gets nor the father who will get it again servant <laughs> Somebody <with me. laughs> so whenever such incident take place it's better to make a new will many complications in ten i'll come to the after question now but if you are giving a will to mr and mrs jointly and one of them dies the legacy doesn't fail if it is meant so and so jointly then it doesn't fail as I already said, as per section 909, child or lineal descendant, even if he dies during the lifetime, doesn't his legal heirs will get the property. Now, if you are, you must have heard the case of Jyoti Basu. I think everybody must be familiar with Jyoti Basu. What happened after his death? There was no rights. His whole body was taken to the hospital and for research purposes so if you want to donate your whole body if you want to donate your eyes 
it is necessary to follow certain procedure mentioned in Bombay Anatomy Act and Bombay Car Cornea Grafting Act. Further, some doctors are here, you can consult them how to donate with this them. <coughs> A valid will must have at least two witnesses. It is not necessary that your witness should be aware of your will. You can only say, please sign this, this is my will and he has to sign. And it is not necessary, it is although desirable, legally it is not compulsory that both of them should be present at the same time. The word used are attestation. Attestation is not signature only. It is the, the purpose of that signature is to testify the signature of testator. It is attestation. It is not mere signature, witness. It is to testify the signature of the testator. Since attestation of the will is compulsory, please remember, since the attestation of will is compulsory, after the death of the testator, one of the witnesses must be examined if they are alive, as per section 68 of Indian Evidence Act. So then only the will will become final, conclusive, probate can be granted. Then, I think, let me go. Now, huh, another point, registration of the will. You want to play safe that people should not, naturally the will is, if I make a will, I will be concerned that nobody should challenge the will. So, registration of the will, you can do, like you are registering property document, sale deed of the property, you can register the will. But the risk is, it will become known to the public. Everybody will come to the know. So, but then what is the way? There is a special provision has been made under the Registration Act. You can execute the will, go to the registrar, put in the sealed cover, and he will not open the seal. When the person dies, you file application for probate, then there will be summons from the court to the registrar. Registrar will take out, open the cover, take out the copy, and again reseal it, and send it to the High Court for issue of probate. So in this manner, the will will remain secret. There is section 40 of Registration Act and section 42 of Registration Act. The will will remain secret. Nobody will come to know till the death unless you yourself want to change it. And attestation, you can also, if you want to evidence, make it just stronger. If you know somebody who is a notary, see there are notaries are unfortunately they are available for 200 rupees in Bombay. Go to any, no. Some good notary who is ready to be examined. If he is attesting your will, it will be a little more useful for you from evidence point of this. Again, if there is a slight error, any correction in the will, you must follow the proper procedure sign and get it attested by two persons. Nowadays there are computers better to take out fresh copy rather than making spelling mistake. No, no, simple mistake. My name is Kishan. I write K-I-S-H-A-N. Sindhis generally write K-I-S-H-I-N. Some people from UP, they write Krishan. So if there is any mistake in any name, anywhere, it's better to have new version or if you are making any, any correction please see that you sign and your witnesses also sign that will any correction must be attested by two persons another thing I'll Hindu law many are uh, having HU of status in income because that's give some tax benefit. So if you are having properties, one in HUF name, one in individual name, both are exempt in wealth tax, income tax act. Now earlier, after the marriage in Hindu law, Karta, Karta's wife and sons had the interest. Now in 2005, 
the law was changed on 6 9 2005 and all partitions etc prior to 20th december 2004 will be valid but nowadays uh, your daughters will have equal right in actual property i'll give you one example somebody had father son and four daughters it's not example it's actually somebody had discussed with me this matter father son and four daughters all the daughters were married before 2000 he was buying a bungalow in Lonawala he thought after discussion he thought let's buy in the name of HUR so there will be no wealth tax no income tax after that this amendment has come now daughters can claim that right in that bungalow and there are so many such cases where now daughters are having in HUR property equal interest they are equal co-partners if you are a tenant, you have to be little careful. If you are a lessee of property in JVPD scheme, or I think where Ms. Ashok has office 44 corporate park, those tenancies are assignable, transferable, heritable. But there are tenancies in Kalba Devi, Masjid Mandar, those are not transferable, assignable without the consent of landlord. So leasehold rights, is there a leasehold property? You must read whether you have the right to assign, whether you can write, you can, whether you can give under the will. All those things one has to be very careful. Lease, leasehold rights, you have to be careful. Tenancy, you have to be careful. All tenancies are not transferable and heritable. We have to read the document under which the right was acquired. Otherwise, Bombay Rent Act will prevail. No, I think two, three other points I would like to take. Now, ownership flats in a housing society. Under Section 30 of Maharashtra Cooperative Societies Act, read with Rule 25, in nominee, you can file a nomination housing society and the nominee will become, flat will be transferred in the name of the nominee. Many people think that nominee, once I have filed nomination, my job is over. Nominee is not the owner. If you want to exclude certain other legal heirs, please, apart from nomination, make another will. Otherwise, things will become difficult. There is a reported case of Gopal Vishnu Ghatnikar. They said nominee is not the owner. It's a very old case. I think most of the people know. Now, again, one more advice. If you are buying a flat with a wife, it's better to buy in joint names. And, you know, that don't sign the ownership agreement given by a builder. Make a special clause. You know, ownership agreement, most of the builders say which term shall mean and include is air executive administrator assigns as tenants in common. No. See that A and B are buying, you will not find in most of the ownership printed agreement. You must, it's better if your intention is A and B, husband and wife, are buying this property as a joint tenants or joint owners with the intention that after the death of either of them, the survivor will become the sole owner. If you are making this clause, providing this clause in the ownership agreement, there may be no need for nomination. This but I believe, no need of will. That flat will be transferred automatically because your purchase document is qualified document that will be so that you can do that if you want. Now, I said nominee is not the owner of a flat in society. But you have filed a nomination in a company in which you are holding shares. What will happen? Nominee will become the owner there. Sometimes the flats are held by the companies. In Bombay, most of the flats we are having cooperative societies. Some places you will find companies owning the flat instead of societies. Under normally, even under the under Companies Act, if there is a nomination, the nominee will prevail. There is a judgment of Bombay High Court, Roshan Dalvi had given two, three years ago. And then 
normally when we draft articles of, you must be aware memorandum association articles association regulation 25 of table a in most of the company articles said provides on the death of a member the survivor will become excuse me please put on the phone please Now, survivor will become the owner. This is very so. This is different from Cooperative Societies Act. Take another case. If shares in a company are held by two brothers, both of them die in a car accident, who will be entitled to those shares? Shares in a company are held by two persons, two brothers jointly. Both of them die in the car accident. One dies on the Monday and another dies on Tuesday. Who will be entitled to those shares? <laughs> Company will recognize the legal heir of the survivor who died on Tuesday. Not on Monday. Not equal. So one who dies later, see the law is of shares are held by A and B jointly. A dies earlier, presumption is the B becomes the survivor, will become the sole owner. And since sole owner has also died, so his legal heirs will come on the record. So when you are drafting a will, please remember all these things. It's not that easy. Coming to insurance policies, if you are having LIC policies, nominee is not the owner, but if you are having MWPP policy, then the assignee is the owner of properties. I think there are so many, but I think gift to unborn, this and that. You can do little, now I am a basic, I started practice as a tax advocate, so let me have little tax planning also. While making a will, you can give, if your son is not having HUF, status you can give some gift make a clear provision that this amount is bequeathed to him as a karta of his HUF he will hold it on behalf of his HUF and he will not treat it as an individual property with that amount he can start his new status that will be HUF you can do one thing after the death don't distribute the assets fully continue for a few years the deceased file will continue, estate of deceased will continue for 10-15 years and separately assessed. Under the will, you are also entitled to create one discretionary trust for the benefit of relative dependents and uh, normally discretionary trust is assessed at the maximum marginal rate but one discretionary trust for the such relatives is assessed at normal rate. So that tax planning can also be there. I think this enough probably. Yeah. Yes. I hope, I've, huh? with this I would like to thank, but then before I th uh, re conclude, I'll just read one or two important uh, quotes from some of the wills. If somebody had written, I bequeath to my wife, her lover, and the knowledge that I was not fool and she thought it to be. <laughs> Another person wrote in his will, to my son, I bequeath the pleasure of earning throughout his life. He thought the pleasure was entirely mine. <laughs> to my daughter, I bequeath my son-in-law the only good thing which my daughter did during his whole time was to marry this the only good thing which he did during his whole time whole life was to marry my daughter and unburden my sorrow <laughs> to my servant i bequeath the clothes which he has stolen from me from time to time i leave my entire estate to my wife provided she marries within three days of my death otherwise to charity i am sure if she remarries then at least one person on this earth will regret my death for the rest of his life with this i thank you very much